intro chemistry, the heat of combustion of fuels. Energy comes in many forms like heat and light, electrical energy, motion, which is kinetics. One of the most common sources is from the combustion of fuels and as you no doubt know fuels are substances that produce a relatively large amount of heat in a chemical reaction that we call combustion. Now you know that combustion requires not only a fuel but also an oxidant and in most cases the oxidant is the oxygen that's present in air. We're going to measure heat energy by a procedure called calorimetry. And this involves heating a mass of water and measuring the temperature change. And the quantity of heat produced, symbol we'll use as Q, is calculated from the formula Q is equal to M Cp delta T. M is the mass of water heated, delta T is the change in the water temperature, and Cp is a specific heat capacity of water. Take a look at this table of specific heat capacities of some common substances. The units are calories to raise one gram of water one Celsius degree, hence calories per gram per Celsius degree. Water has one of the highest heat capacities of any substance. It's considerably higher than other liquids and many solids. Look for example at aluminum. The heat capacity is only about a fifth of that of water. So here's the formula. We'll look at it again. Mass is in grams. Temperature changes in Celsius degrees. And so heat capacity is calories per gram per Celsius degree. And so Celsius degrees and grams will cancel. Hence we can calculate calories. Something to point out the notation on the degrees. If I say degrees Celsius, well that would be a temperature, but if I say Celsius degrees, that's a temperature change. Note the difference? For example, if at 8 a.m. the temperature was 2 degrees Celsius, and by 11 a.m. the temperature rose to 12 degrees Celsius, then the temperature change would be the difference 12 degrees Celsius minus 2 degrees Celsius is 10 Celsius degrees. Note how the degree symbol follows the Celsius symbol when we want to indicate a temperature change. This certainly gives clarity to the reader to understand what's being conveyed in print. Now in this experiment the heat produced from the air combustion of three fuels methanol, isopropanol, and paraffin wax will be determined by calorimetry. Let's look at a combustion reaction briefly. So fuels generally contain hydrogen and carbon and occasionally they also contain oxygen as in the case of alcohols for example. Hydrogen when it is completely burned or oxidized it's converted entirely to water. When carbon is completely burned or oxidized it converts completely to CO2 any oxygen in the fuel doesn't have any heat value so oxygen doesn't add fuel value it just adds mass. Let's balance the equation for the complete combustion of ethanol in oxygen. So we place our reactants on the left hand side of the equation the products on the right. Now in a balanced equation you have to have the same mass on both sides of the equation we have to have the same number of elements of each kind on both sides of the equation. So I need the same number of carbon atoms on both sides, the same number of hydrogen atoms on both sides, and the same number of oxygen atoms on both sides. And we do this by adding whole number coefficients in front of each formula to balance it. There's no prescribed sequence for balancing an equation, but it's best to start with the most complicated formulas and leave the simplest to the end. For example, if I put a coefficient in front of the oxygen, then I only change the number of oxygens. However, if I put a coefficient in front of a more complicated formula, I change the number of all types of atoms in the formula. So start with the most difficult, leave the simplest to the end. 
Let's start with ethanol. Ethanol has two carbons. Carbon dioxide only has one. Put a two in front of CO2 and carbon is now balanced. We have a total of six hydrogens on the left, two on the right, coefficient of three makes those equal. Now we can balance the oxygen. On the right hand side we have four plus three. We have a total of seven oxygens. And on the left we have one plus, and then this has to be six oxygens, so it balances. And so to make six we put a three here. It's that simple. Looks like we have what we need. Let's get started with the experiment. So the apparatus includes a balance, 100 mil graduated cylinder, a funnel. We're going to use an aluminum pop can for a calorimeter, some cold water, a thermometer, a couple of alcohol lamps, one for methanol, one for isopropyl alcohol, and there's our candle wax and a lighter. So we'll start with methanol first. We'll get the weight of the aluminum can. You need to record this. 14.05 grams. We'll add 100 mils of cold water. We'll weigh and get the total mass. You can subtract the weight of the can from the total mass to get the mass of water. hundred and twelve decimal one four grams. Here's the methanol lamp. We'll get its initial mass. Two seventeen decimal four nine grams. Okay we're all set up. I've got the thermometer sitting so it's just above the bottom of the can but suspend it in the liquid. Initial temperature of the liquid is 14.0 degrees C. We've got the alcohol lamp just a couple centimeters below the aluminum can. Now we'll let this heat till the temperature gets up at least above 40. It's been cooking for a while, looks warm. We'll turn the lamp off. We need to get the maximum temperature. Looks like 53.0 degrees. And we'll get the final mass of the methanol alcohol lamp. 215 decimal 95. So subtract that from the first mass and we'll know the amount of methanol used. All right, I'm going to repeat this for isopropyl alcohol. The mass of the can hasn't changed. So we'll just subtract the mass of the can from the total mass now to get the mass of water. 113 decimal 12 grams. Here's the isopropyl alcohol lamp. Looks like 173 decimal 03 grams. Our starting temperature 13.0 degrees Celsius. We'll let that heat for a while. Okay, so the temperature is risen. We'll shut the lamp off again. Once again, we want the maximum temperature. Looks like 40.0 degrees Celsius. And we'll weigh the lamp for isopropyl alcohol and see how much has been used. 172.30 grams. 
and finally now for candle wax one thirteen decimal three four grams and we'll need the initial mass of the candle thirty six point seven one grams our initial temperature is thirteen point zero degrees celsius take a look at the flame it's much more luminous or glowing than the other alcohol flames. Why is that? Well, alcohols are liquids that boil at low temperature. Combustion occurs in the vapor phase, so the alcohol lamps uh, burn readily. But remember, wax is a solid. It has to melt before it can even vaporize, so it requires a higher temperature to burn completely. We have unburned carbon this is incomplete combustion. It's just the nature of the candle wax. All right, we've reached a high temperature. Looks like 58.0 degrees Celsius. Look at the large amount of unburned carbon, or soot, on the bottom of that can. Alright, let's get our final mass of the candle. Thirty-five decimal eight zero grams. So I think we have everything we need to do the calculations. Let's uh, go back to the procedure and look and see how that is done. In the lab procedure, you will find a table where you can enter your data and results for the two alcohols and paraffin wax. And you are also provided with the literature values of the heat of combustion for methanol, isopropyl alcohol, and paraffin wax so that you can calculate the percentage error. You're also provided with a table showing sample calculations, this one for methanol. Please record your data the same way as is shown in the tables. So here's the initial mass of the empty aluminum can, the can plus water. The difference would be the mass of water. Here's the initial temperature in this example, the final temperature, the temperature difference of 19 Celsius degrees. The heat absorbed by the water and the heat absorbed by the can, now how is that determined? Q equals M. CP delta T. For the water, we have the mass of water times the heat capacity of the water, one calorie per gram Celsius degree, and the temperature rise by the water is 1890 calories. Similarly, for the can itself, it absorbs heat, and that has to be counted as part of the total heat released. The mass of the can times the heat capacity of aluminum, 0.215 calories per gram Celsius degree, times the same temperature rise as the water, 19 Celsius degrees, for 56.1 calories. So that if we add these two quantities of heat together, we'll get the total quantity of heat released or measured in our experiment, 1942 calories. Here it is. Then we have the initial mass of the alcohol lamp, and the final mass, the difference is the mass of methanol burned, and so for then we take the total calories released divided by the grams of alcohol burned, we get the heat released in calories per gram. If we divide that by 1,000, we'll have 2.56 kcals per gram. That's the experimental heat of combustion in this example for methanol. Finally, we're going to calculate the percentage error which would be measured minus the true over the true times 100. In this example, 2.56 kcals per gram. 
minus the literature value, a whopping 5.34 kcals per gram, divided by the true value again, times 100, is negative 52%. Again, if you measure less than the true value, make sure you report a negative percent error. Now you might wonder, why are we so low? That's quite a big error. Well, think about it. The amount of heat released by the burner, is it all absorbed by the aluminum can and the water in it, or is some of it lost to the environment? It's a pretty open system, so it's not surprising that we lose quite a bit of heat. If we wanted to perform calorimetry accurately, we need a different apparatus. Take a look at the pictures here. This is called a bomb calorimeter, and the bomb actually is the stainless steel heavy walled vessel. In it, the fuel is placed in a suspended cup or dish, and a metal wire runs through the fuel. That wire is connected externally to a DC power supply. That's our detonator. The bomb itself is pressurized with 25 atmospheres of pure oxygen. The bomb sits immersed in several liters of water in a stainless steel bucket. We have a stirrer to homogenize the temperature and a thermometer. So before firing the bomb, before igniting the fuel, we measure the temperature on the thermometer. Then we press the igniter. Current flows through the fuse, which ignites and burns the fuel completely. All the heat that's released is absorbed by the water, and the temperature rise is measured by the thermometer. The outside is a Bakelite jacket to insulate the entire system, so it's pretty accurate. This is a fully contained system. This is the standard method for measuring the heat of combustion of fuels or calorific content of foods. And this experiment is done in fourth semester chemistry. There are also three questions that you're required to answer in this lab, and let's take a look at that. Question one says, why is the experimental heat of combustion lower than the actual theoretical value? What changes could you make in the setup of this experiment to improve the results? I think we addressed that. Question two says, write a balanced equation for the complete combustion of methanol and isopropanol. We did not include wax here because wax is not a pure substance. Candle wax is a mixture of different hydrocarbons of varying molecular weight. And question number three asks you to look at the graph and table accompanying and then answer accordingly. Let's first look at the graph. Now the graph simply plots what's shown here in the table. So here's the heat of combustion in kcals per gram of various fuels. And one thing that leaps to the eye is how much more heat is released by hydrogen per gram than any other fuel. We're looking at about 34 kcals per gram compared to only about 8 kcals per gram for carbon. And so a hydrocarbon fuel, which is a mixture of hydrogen and carbon, will give off heat depending upon the ratio of hydrogen and carbon. Obviously, the greater the ratio of hydrogen to carbon, the greater will be its heat of combustion. As you get longer carbon chains, there's the ratio of hydrogen to carbon decreases and so does the heat of combustion. Now add an oxygen to the fuel, as in the case of alcohols, and you get a pretty significant drop in the heat of combustion, that is per gram. And that's because the mass of oxygen is increasing the mass of the fuel, but oxygen itself is not a fuel. So I think given that, looking at the ratios of carbon to hydrogen, carbon to oxygen, hydrogen to oxygen, you can probably answer those questions quite well. So that ends our experiment on the heat of combustion of fuels.